And um, I think knowing me, I probably did uh, some of these questions the long way. So for this question, let me do it the short way. And um, um, and in any case, I think I've done in the lecture derivation of the magnetic field due to a circular coil. So when you see a question like this, which asks, how many turns must be wound on a flat circular coil of radius 16 centimeter in order to produce a magnetic field of this at the center of the coil and the current is this. So let me just sketch out to map out the information that's been given to me. So somehow I have a circular coils, some number of turns, we'll just say n turns total. And we are being given the radius of the coil and uh, we are being given what the magnetic field uh, here should be and we are giving being given the current some amount of current flowing and what we are being asked for is the number of turns so when you see a question like this uh, there are some um, different uh, levels you can go to. I guess the, the most do-it-from-scratch model would be to drive the expression for the magnetic field due to a loop of current, you know, start from here. And uh, I guess you can just drive it at the center of the um, uh, the loop. And uh, you would use the Bio savarts law, which says that uh, I only really have this memorized in the version with the permeability of free space. So let me write that version first, and then I'll rewrite it into the other one that continues to use Coulomb's uh, constant and the speed of light. Um, so the Biot-Savart's law describes the infinitesimal contribution to magnetic field due to a current segment, which is going to be mu naught over 4 pi times the amount of current, the infinitesimal segment, cross product with the r hat, uh, the r being the, the displacement vector from the, the segment to the place where you're calculating the value over r squared, and this is the inverse square part. So you can start from here, integrate over and do all that. That's the most uh, from scratch method. Uh, I almost forgot to write down the second expression. So the second expression comes from basically this correspondence that uh, whenever you see mu naught, ooh, can I remember this? I think it's a four pi k over um, c squared. Um, <laughs> let me work this through. So c squared is, um, 1 over epsilon naught mu naught and uh, ke is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught so epsilon naught is 1 over 4 pi ke so 1 over uh, 1 over 4 pi ke mu naught yeah so I think it's right so 4 pi ke over mu naught is a c squared so solve for mu naught, yeah, yeah. So using this relationship, I can rewrite it this way. Um, so four pi is cancel out, and I have ke over c squared times i d l cross r hat over r squared. If you are wondering why speed of light occurs here at all, I'll leave that as a mystery until near the end of the semester. Uh, some of you might already know why. Um, I'll just. Leave it as a mystery for the official matter until the end of the semester, where we'll finally explain what's the relationship between speed of light and magnetism, uh, or electromagnetism. Um, so, so you can do that from scratch. The much quicker method, <laughs> which I'll go on to do, is follow one of these hints, which will probably tell you, yeah, the section that actually drives magnetic field over current loop. And what's the hint of two? Uh, yeah, oh, integer number of turns, okay. So when you go to that section, uh, which uh, I guess I could have just done that, then you know, it'll do the derivation and you are welcome to follow as much of derivation as you want to. In the end, really all I need is the formula that they derive, um, wait. Oh, they have the one for the center of the loop. Let me use this. I think they also derive the one for the, um, one for the, yeah, at some distance y, but I'll just use this. So 
the derived results that says the magnetic field due to single loop at the center of that circular loop is going to be mu naught or converting to that it's going to be uh, 4 pi ke over 2 c squared times i over r um, j hat uh, uh, we'll say that uh, g hat we'll just define this to be the g axis doesn't matter um, the question is asking for direction anyway so um, so given that this is the magnetic field due to a single loop then the expression for the magnetic field due to n number of loops should be b total just writing the magnitude should be n times that and you are given this total so you just solve for it um, n is equal to b total which i will for which i'll plug in the given number um, 3 times 10 to the minus 5 tesla y that is small um, divide by this expression here so uh, 4 pi times ke over um, 2c squared times current which we have divided by r which we have so when i plug that into wolfram alpha and i like using wolfram alpha because i don't have to look up constants i put in the uh, parameters 3e minus 5 tesla divided by um, it's going to be big uh, parenthesis 4 pi times coulombs constant it is actually extra work to do it this way than just use permeability of free space which you are welcome to do you can also call it magnetic constant in all from alpha 2 times the speed of light squared times the current uh, 0 0.75 ampere divided by are 16 centimeters and Wolfram Alpha will convert the unit for me so I can just put it in this way and we get make sure it understood me correctly we get a unitless result which is what we want and uh, here I think if I put in 10 it'll tell me I'm wrong because you have to read the question carefully it keeps saying at least minimum and the answer, the real number is 10.2. So if I have 10 turns, my magnetic field is an at least going to be this. <laughs> so I need 11 turns to have magnetic field that's greater than this. So, oh, I guess that's what I hinted to us about. Yeah, as an integer number of turns, and in your choice between 10 and 11, you don't round the nearest. You have to round up based on the correct reading of the question. Okay, good. So that's the quicker way to do it, which would have been quicker if I didn't go through this. 